in all of the thousand year door partners from worst to best. After praying for the game again, I can introduce you while it's fresh in the mind. Who is the worst partner and who is the best partner? So, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty obvious at the end of the video. Or even at the beginning of the video. If you have played the game before. For the whole game. But yeah. There are a total of seven partners. And we'll be ranking them from worst to best. Number seven is Miss Meows or Miss Mouse. She is the worst partner in the game. She's an optional partner. And basically her whole thing is she can get you badges from enemies. But it's very rare an enemy would actually have a badge. So unless you want to actually farm for badges, Miss Mouse is not actually a very useful partner. The only other good thing is that, you know, Love Slap can negate damage. And she also has fingers she can steal her badges as well. And yeah, many of her abilities are not very useful. They can, there's no one because they can immobilize. Like, even in the original game, I rarely use Miss Meows as a partner. Like, compared to everybody else, she is obviously the worst of them all. Uh, number six, worst partners, Furry. Yes, Furry is the sixth worst partner. Someone actually ranked Furry at the top, but... That's if you have, that's if you use a specific strategy that you have to get the dodgy fog, which you have to get the extra abilities. But her, she has three abilities. She has the body slam, she has the rip rock, and she can blow away things. Chloe is a much more useful partner than Me Miss Meows. She can blow enemies away if you don't want to fight too many. But you, but you do get a crystal style ability later in the game that also can instantly kill enemies. As well, but she's also very useful to taking out those those pesky mini yuxes and Goris's things. And unless you want us to just use multi bounce with Mario, whereas again, completely negates Flory's ability because multi bounce is available since chapter one. Also, her ability uh, attack body slam is something is very inconsistent to use. And yeah, that is it about Flory as well. She is still pretty useful on uncovering things in the overworld. Was it see this is pretty useful till the end of the game. Number six. This will be a soccer here. Coops. Coops is very good in the OE game as there aren't many characters until you get uh Vivian that can and of course later you'll see if you get the stampede that can hit all enemies. Coops' power cell can also hit enemies like piranha plants and stuff with spikes as well. Which is pretty useful because he won't have Spike Sealed until he get Vivian. So, Coops beats Flurry because of this. Because Coops can hit any enemy without having, and versus that pesky, uh, what, what, there's a, yeah, there's that one enemy, that stone thing, where it has those spikes on the side, yeah, except for that thing. But yeah, until you get Spike Sealed, Coops is basically one of the more useful partners you have on you because Coops can basically. Take out enemies, you know, especially if it's like a big horde, pretty easily. And also could deal with spiked enemies, but it's easier. Yoshi could do it, but then it, Yoshi still outclasses Coops with Gulp anyways. So Yoshi remains more useful throughout the game than Coops. Coops can also use Cell Sealed, but it's alive, but kind of like Body Slam. It's wildly inconsistent as well. Okay, next place, I'm going to have to put... Barbary, it's because Barbary's other attacks are not really too useful. So Barbary has bomb and then has mini bomb, which only does like one damage unless you get the full power of Barbary, where you have to figure out some puzzle for the weird guy. And then you also get the one where well, direct attacks can, I never use that. And also you have Bombast, which is a secret ability you can get. But again, Bombast costs too much FP. As well. Uh, again, if Barbary had better abilities, I think he would definitely be ranked in the higher Echelon uh, partners. Uh, number three would be Goombella. The only reason I, Goombella has two pretty powerful abilities. If you get the full power of Goombella, she has Rally Rank, which lets Mario go two times. Which means if you use Power Rift and use that, you can basically deal. Either use Multi Bounce, the, not Power Multi Bounce, Power Jump. 
And if you time it correctly, you can get tons of damage off of it using a strategy like 5, you know, HP. Yeah, giving Mario the extra turn is very useful. But there's another very useful ability uh, Goombella has, and it's Tattle. Tattle basically reveals the amount of health, attack, and strategy to defeat each enemy or boss. This is very useful, and also useful for completing 100% of the game. And also very useful for defeating bosses and giving you hints on how to defeat the bosses, and hints for what the bosses are going to be able to do. This is a very useful ability that, especially for new players, is very useful. Of course, if you played the game, you'll know how you'll know strategies to already beat the characters to, and enemies in the game. So we're going over the top two most useful partners. These two partners can be used interchangeably, but I'm going to put Vivian at number two. So Vivian's attack, which is Sage Fist, I think that's what the attack is called, can do fire damage to the enemies. This is very useful as basically, you know, you can basically do fire damage to any enemy. And when it's a fire enemy. Then you also have the one where he, where he puts you on the ground thing that's called Veil. And it's very useful, especially if an enemy has a charge attack and you want to dodge it. And then you also have the vulnerability, which is... And then you have Fiery Zings, which can also take out hordes of enemies pretty quickly. It's very useful attack for it in the game. It must be fighting the Phantom Embers. But but for the Exonauts and other enemies, it's pretty useful because it does a lot of damage. It also burns all enemies, too. And then you also have the fourth ability that confuses enemies as well. Which is sometimes pretty unreliable. And number one is Yossi. Yes, Yossi is still the number one partner. Yoshi has ground pound, which in the earlier portions of the game can do a massive amount of damage as well. Also with a charge ability, Yoshi can do a lot of damage. Gulp can easily deal with those pesky spiky and fire enemies. Especially if we don't have a bad to deal with them. Yoshi is the best to do it. Yoshi has mini eggs egg which can reduce attack of any enemies. These if you want to make the game easier for you. And also Stampede if you unlock the profile of Yoshi. Stampede is a pretty powerful ability. Kind of similar to Fiery Jinx. And my, but only problem is Stampede. I don't think it can really have fine enemies. Because they're in the air. But yeah. Also the best ability of Yoshi. Is Yoshi can make you move faster in the overworld. And you get Yoshi pretty early. Which Yoshi basically outclasses the second and third partners practically. Which means ever since you get Yoshi. Flurry and Coops are never really seen again. Yeah, you know, that's basically how it goes every single time. So what is your favorite partner in your research partner? I think it's different for everybody as well. But yeah, those are the uh, worst to best. And yeah, maybe in a, if they do make a Fowler's Day Doors Eagle, they can give justice to Miss Meows. But the pilots make new partners anyways. And that's about this video here. Goodbye.